I hope you never have to deal with trickster energy. And if you're dealing with it, I hope you find a way out of it. Hey, Constance Mesmer here. Thank you so much for tuning in. Listen, it's like first thing in the morning for me. And I have to circle back to trickster energy. That video and content got a lot of um, comments to it. And I really needed to address some. I hate this subject, right? I just skip it. I skip those lower realms. I'm going to teach you how. And it's with intention. You know, that's how. With intention. You just recognize it and say, I have no time for you and you rise above. But it was particularly the conversation on like entities and attachments, the, that little thread of conversation in there that um, got some people asking further questions and wanting more information. And I have to tell you that I don't think some people understand how serious this is because some of the comments were like, just send them light and love, you know, they're all parts of us. And <laughs> Yeah, yes, we are all one. Yes, we are all one. But this is not a Jungian individuation thing where you incorporate parts of your shadow energy. This is recognizing and creating boundaries because much like if someone came to me and said they were in an abusive relationship or was someone that, um, or, or in a setting or a situation that was harmful or toxic, I wouldn't say stick around and just spread your light and love. That'd be irresponsible. So the fact that some people's suggestions were to just, you know, be in that space of love and we're all one. Yes, we are all one. But when it is an entity or a being that doesn't have your best intention at heart, it is, it is not your responsibility to transform them to light and love. That's why I go higher in those moments. I call on guardian angels. You could call on archangel, St. Michael, great protector, to come cart them off. I use Christ consciousness when I was doing work and taking entities off people. I was like, whoa, this is beyond me. I need help here. And, you know, so call on your masters of your faith tradition if you come across this. And also, um, you know, I've had people tell me stories off of that thread about uh, noticing energy in their homes for whatever reason. And they got out their smudge sticks and that worked fabulous. Toning can work. Pitches, demands, like get out of here. You have no right being here. Um, you know, it's backed with fierce intention. Uh, I, there were times in my life when I was doing this work, like since I brought up that trickster video, I'm like, gosh, I need to wear my rosary. Right? Listen, I pray the rosary, right? This, we all have our way of prayer or surrounding ourselves with that goodness and protection in the ways that we do. Find your way, right? Prayer beads, whatever. And there were times when I would wear a rosary around my neck, not just pray it but and use it, but but just call on the graces of heaven to help and protect. Um, I've used holy water in spaces whenever I did clearings, even ghost clearings. Holy water, you know, ask the saints and the sages, look to their recorded writings or books in various faith traditions, whenever they tangled with like demonic energy or dark energy or, you know, whatever it was, would they would pray, call on the name of God, whether you use Allah, Satna, Marama, Jehovah, Great Spirit, higher power, call on the name of God and demand that they leave or or, or ask God to take them away, you know. Um, it's recognizing in those moments, when is this beyond me? There's been times when I've worked with people in spaces that I could lift it and cart it off myself, but there were other times, you know, and I would just say, I'm you know, taking you, giving you to heaven or you need to leave. Let me, what do you need to tell your story? And then you'll go, you know, you can just like a, as someone in real life, you recognize and honor your um, common sense. Like, is this somebody has the energy feel? Remember this is why we've gone over the early clears before. How does this energy feel to me? Is it, is it safe enough that I can 
you know, is this just a wayward spirit that I can deal with on my own? Or do I need to <laughs> bring in the, you know, the higher ups? And so recognizing in those moments, not running in fright because you're seeing it for a reason. You're dealing with it for a reason. And so, you know, using holy water to throw at them in their direction, calling on prayer, using your holy beads, calling on the name of God, all of these things, your angels to come in and take them, you know, all of these things. Now, why do some people tussle with the devil? The great saints and sages, you know, dark night of the soul, many, Padre Pio, many saints and sages tussled with the devil. When you come to do immense and incredible work, sometimes that happens. And I, by the grace of God, have not had to deal with it much in my life and in my work. And I am so grateful. But I know I was meant to deal with it so I could talk about it. And so when some people in the thread were commenting, I'm like, I don't think you understand how serious this is or you wouldn't put it so lightly because others have commented in the thread about how, you know, their lives have been impaired. Or I know people that when I've opened up this discussion have talked about um, spirits coming to them and, you know, I hate to say this word, warning, warning, you know, about, you know, you know, sexual, like, touching or molestation, like, they had to, you know, wake themselves up. This happened to me once. It wasn't, when I came off a 10-day meditation, I was at the very end, like, day nine. I had this profound experience. It was a, a lucid dream where I, someone was coming in the room, a man was coming in the room, and yes, that triggered my trauma because I had that happen to me in real life as a child. And and it, but for me, you know, it's what scared the bejesus out of me in the lucid dream. But for me, it it was both and. It was, it was coming to the awareness that the nadi, the, you know, it was a, a Vipassana meditation. And so these things were leaving out of my soul space and that was one of them. But the fact that he was coming in the room, this entity in dream, you know, projection time, was so that I could say, get the bleep out of here. It was not about <laughs> incorporating this or forgiveness or love and light. It was not that. And so you have to know common sense, right? You have to use your common sense in physical life and in your spiritual life and in your soul awareness, your soul senses to know like, how do I want to deal with this? You know, it's awareness, breath and care. It's awareness, something's wrong. Take a breath like, okay, I'm powerful, but is this beyond me? And how do I need to deal with this? Asking, asking, how should I deal with this? I need help here. And letting the answer come in all the clairs, not just listening for a voice. Cause some of you are like, I don't hear things. And I'm like, well, maybe you feel things or maybe you know things. Maybe it's just a, it's a sense, right, of a of cognizance and knowing. And I'll talk more about that later. But it's recognizing that you're a dynamic part of this process. And it's happening because you can deal with it, right? Now, why is it happening at all? So anyway, let me go back to that story. So the dude that came in, and for me it was a man because that was my trauma history. Um, I just woke myself up and said, no. Now I wasn't able to do that as a small child. So this was very healing for me to say, get out and no, right? And so, so sometimes, you know, in my life, I've had to recognize where do I have no boundaries, <laughs> you know, from that first trauma incident of trusting a, a someone that was, you know, betrayed me in that way. And so sometimes, you know, people say, why does bad shit happen to good people? I'm like, God, isn't that the age old question? Now, I, I don't know the answer, but I've tapped into some answers for some people that sometimes it's karma, right? Sometimes it's like you were crap in another life and now you're dealing with the crap that you dished out and it's got to calm out. Or maybe you're, um, maybe because it's about learning the lesson of saying no, creating boundaries, toughening up realizing that there's all kinds of people and there's all kinds of spirits, some good and some that don't have your best intention at heart. And I don't want to scare you because some of you got really scared, like, oh my gosh, do I even want to tap into my soul senses if this could happen? Well, that's what I told you in the last time. Well, that's exactly what the evil wants, you know, is to not have, they want to spread more evil fear and, uh, what's that word that I forgot to use in the last episode? Um, 
uh, paranoia. <laughs> Do you know? That's what they want, right? And why did I giggle? Because I'm like, what the? Mm. Um, you know, it's just, uh, it's recognizing that the world is full of ups and downs and good and bad choices, right? Uh, and people that are good and 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 functioning with love and helping humanity. This is even in our politics, right? And there's other people that it's all about them. It's greed. It's, you know, what can they get out of it? And to hell with everybody else. I don't care who's dying. I mean, there's no such thing. <laughs> I don't even want to say this. There's whatever. I'm not going to say that. <sighs> I'm not going to say that. That's another podcast episode for another time. So what do I use? I've used holy water. I've used prayer beads. Like my, for me, it's a rosary. I've invoked the name of God, you know, highest truth, highest source. I've called on angels to help come in. I have used sage. It depends the level of the issue. I've also worked with talking to spirit directly, but when in doubt, go do without. Like if you're feeling like, God, is should I talk to this being directly? Remember last time I said, don't talk to the being directly. Talk above. Go, I'm calling on the highest truth to give me guidance on, on what to do here. It's the same thing as, you know, if you're having problems in your family or someone in the physical. I wouldn't necessarily go to them to say, hey, uh, what's your deal, dude? You're so nasty or mean or whatever, especially if it's an abusive someone or someone that's manipulative or can't see their shadow darkness because they're not working their shit, really. I would go higher and I would ask God or my guides or, um, and, or, and I'm going to work with you on getting your guide team together, who you can trust and how you discern truth. But I would go higher and say, what's the deal with them? And how should I handle that? You know, um, or even my own, you know, I'm calling on my own higher self to help me process this not the part of me listen when I was young <laughs> and even you know I was such an idealist and I was really uh gullible and naive because I wanted everybody I, I still see everybody's light so I'm like well oh what's the goodness here what's the goodness here which is a great trait I never want to lose that but I have to remember that I also have to go wait what is their agenda because there's something not quite right here and so where are they functioning from? Is the is it from this place of, um, you know, just ego mind filters or uh, their own agenda? And I, and I have to do the same with working with new guides, right? And this is probably not the place to say it, but I'm going to say it anyway. It's all, um, you know, people have asked, what about my tarot cards? Or what about my tools of divination? Divining truth. That's what divination you know, what's my, what about my tools? Can I use those? And I'm like, absolutely. If you resonate with them and they help you kind of open up to the awarenesses, go for it. It's all about intention. So if your intention is good and pure and you're trying to deliver good and highest truth, then, you know, whatever. The, it's not the tool that's I'm asking spirit while I'm saying this. It's not the tool that's bad. It's the intention that needs to be on board with, you know, what I need here. But I also <laughs> want to tell you, you don't really need the tool of divination. You don't. This is why I'm teaching you, right? This is, you know, you'd probably be better off, you know, flip the card or flip the rune or whatever and close your eyes before you read the meaning and say, what are you trying to tell me with this? Signs are everywhere. You know, what's that bird mean? What's that... Fox that run across my yard mean? What's that tarot card mean? What's that? What's the message for me? You know, it's, it's got, it's got to be deeper relationship in my opinion. And so it's all about intention. If your intention is pure and wanting to get to highest truth, goodness and light. Now, you know, some cards, tarot cards are reversed, right? And sometimes life throws us crap to deal with. So what is that about? So, you know, it, it could be karma. It could be you working through your shadow stuff. You, you know, the stuff that you don't want to look at, the stuff that you were born into. Maybe you're the spark of light in your family, neighborhood, 
community world, you know, there are people that are lured by greed and troubles and, you know, not highest good and highest love source. You know, we see it all over the planet. We're here with free will. So, you know, my thing is trying to help us all recognize all the goodness that can be found from choosing right, <laughs> as opposed to choosing uh, things that are just self-serving. Because this work, once you start recognizing how beautiful it is, it, it spreads across and in your life so that it affects how you live as one with others and you understand that principle of oneness and you realize, oh, inside, outside, what I do makes a difference in my world and my vibration at this frequency of awareness and understanding helps others. So the more you run and live in fear because, oh, I'm not going to get into the senses of my soul because I'm worried about tangling with spirits that are lesser evolved or, you know, ha are evil intent. Don't open your door to go outside. <laughs> like, come on, man. There's, there's people on the planet that are that way. Right. And, and, and what can we do? We can pray for them. Definitely at a distance, you know? So I think that, um, it doesn't mean stop doing the work. It doesn't mean stop going outside. It doesn't mean, it just means creating boundaries and recognizing who and what you want to talk with. And, um, and so when I was reading some of those comments that were kind of lighthearted about this, I thought, oh, clearly those people have never tussled with it like others have, others have. And, um, and so, yes, there are standards of behavior in this work, standards of intention when you're connecting. And there's also, um, knowing, look at this, my hair is like, my kids would say it's a fountain. Um, there are also layers, right? That you're like, okay, this I can deal with on my own. This I don't even want to deal with. This I need to call in higher help. This I need to call on, you know, priest, a rabbi, a, a monk, a whomever to help bless the space. You know, this I need to get holy water at my faith tradition or at a faith tradition. I can do this with these tools of, of this high frequency like sage or toning or singing bowls or I remember working with a shaman to clear the energy. A young man had taken his life in a house and the energy was heavy. And I was brought in as a channel, a medium to talk to the, the, the young man and uh, help kind of clear the air. But the sadness was so thick that we needed to clear the energy of sadness because the depression was so heavy. And I brought it to a point, but it was the shaman that came in after me. I'm getting chills thinking of it. The shaman came in after me. I was like, this is your world, right? You know, who's skilled at those certain areas? And the shaman came in after me and did this amazing chanting, energy shifting, smoking, smudging thing. And I could feel the energy shift in the space. I was like, wow, this is, <laughs> this is amazing. You know, and then with the, the, the family was able to lift the sadness and, and still have the loving sense of what um, was good and light and true and the joy that that child had brought them, that, that young person had brought into their world. It was just a different energy, right? And so sometimes um, what you're feeling is not just the presence of something, but the lingering effects of something or someone, someone something because it could also be arguments taking place in that space this is like I could go on and on and on on this topic right I am going to get into clearing spaces and I actually might take you on a clearing with me uh a ghost clearing I might do that um but in regards to this in regards to trickster energy in your meditation time or having them come to you in your home or your space or whatever, it is the same as physical. It exists. It doesn't mean you stop going out your door to live your life. 
It just means you recognize it and create boundaries. Now, when you keep listening and you get to the crown chakra, I talk about spiritual awakenings and psychotic breaks. I am in this episode, I am not referring to psychotic breaks where it's a psychosis, where someone is thinking that they're the second coming or their family members are, you know, on the wanted list or, you know, things that are definitely in need of um, help because it's mental illness. I'm talking um, about when you have these interactions and how to rid them in your space and in your spiritual space. And so it's recognizing when it comes to you or if it happens to you, can I deal with this myself? Do I need to call in help spiritually, angels, God? Um, or do I need to call in kind of an expert in that field, whether a healer, a shaman, a space clearer, a priest, a rabbi, or whomever, right? You know what? I'm really sorry I have to talk about this stuff. This is what bums me out the most, right? Is that we even have to have this conversation. I'm of the ilk. It's like, why can't, why can't we all live in peace, love, and harmony? Why can't we? Thank God I didn't stop on those two occasions where I was, uh, where I had let's call it demonic interference in my work. Thank God I didn't stop. I'm, I'm, I'm begging you to get the help that you need and lift your heart and mind higher and set your intention. And so, so for some people that are having this constant battle, spirit right now is saying, for some people that are having this constant battle throughout their life, repeating patterns of this, I encourage you to sit with your soul and journal it out and say, what's happening here? And tune into your own divine wisdom inside you. You know, maybe it's, maybe it's because you have to work on your own boundaries in your physical world. Maybe you let people walk all over you or take advantage of you in your physical day-to-day -day spaces. And so as above, so below, you know, if you're, if you're, if you're, and by that, what I mean is what you're doing in the physical world is happening in your spiritual time in your soul time you know we're body and soul and so what you're allowing to happen to your body is also happening to your soul so again if you're in toxic relationships in your day-to-day -day body life and if or if you're in toxic relationships in your spiritual encounters this is about getting the help that you need just saying i need out right i need to not be bamboozled i need to stand my ground and sometimes this is not about staying in the same place you know this is a little off topic but not really this is not about living in the same place with toxic behavior or abusive people it's about getting out and then getting help from an outside space and that's what i'm saying spiritually you're not the one sometimes to clear the space. Maybe you need to get out of the space and have someone else come in and clear the space. And so same when you're in an abusive relationship, mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually, you know, any of those ways that abuse or toxicity can happen. It's about getting out and saving yourself and, you know, praying for them. But it's not always your responsibility to take care of and help sort them one-on-one. -on -one. Sometimes the only thing you can do is get out, right? And then just pray for them and bless them and hope they get their bleep together in this life. I just want you to go in aware. You know, I brought up trickster energy because I wanted to tell you, like Teresa Vavala in her book about the castle, if you stay in the lesser mind and you don't shift your awareness up with the intention of connecting to the higher realms, you're going to get this static interference that are ego embellishments, projections, and I'm going to start talking about those. 
It's about intention and it's learning the workings of your mind in this spiritual space, you know, that occurs within the processing of the mind. Because that's where all this stuff runs, except claircognizance, which just is a download and it's a knowing. But all the rest has to be processed through your mind. Um, and it's recognizing how you're an active part of that. And so, um, I was really sorry I had to bring that up, but I realized I needed to. I think any great teacher worth their salt would. Um, please believe me, I wanted to avoid it, but spirit kept insisting. And then when I saw the comments of some of you that have been tussling with that energy or have tussled with that energy, I'm like, yeah, I can relate. Or healers that have worked on people with that energy that they've had to help release. You know, and, and how does it happen? Sometimes it's from our own trauma and things attach on or sometimes it's from past life stuff or empathics that pick up trauma in the home or take on the abuse and it attaches as a as a thought process or an entity or a projection. But you don't have to put up with it, you know. So and some people need therapy for it. You know, if you're in that hard place. Someone else asked, do I have to you know, go on antidepress or do I have to get off my antidepressants to deal with any of this? I'm like, no, never go off any medicine that you're supposed to be on. You know, God talks to all of us. We can all get in touch with our angels. I mean, cause they're around. I'm just trying to help you open up the pathways to do that. But in this trickster energy, I'm also trying to inform you that you don't have to live with it, that there's ways out, right? And sometimes it means, um, this is repetitive information, they're saying say it anyway. Sometimes it means you can't do it on your own. So if you can do it on your own, great. If you can't do it on your own, call in help whether in the physical or the spiritual. I mean, that's why I was called for ghost clearings. People couldn't get rid of the weird energy in the home. Or people came for healings because they felt something was attached to them. And sometimes it was shame, the energy of shame, because they had gone through trauma in their own life or, you know, or it was mental constructs because they were in abusive relationships. And so those same voices were in their head. And it was about kind of clearing that. And then also for me, it was working with them to recognize what that path was about. And then them going to therapy to get this way of kind of re new habits, new thought habits that they had to work right? To keep their sacred space of their mind. And, you know, same with house clearings. Don't invite the ghosts back. <laughs> Don't invite the ghosts back. I'm asking spiritually to tell you that story. I did a ghost clearing. Did I tell you that story? Sometimes I feel like I've told you everything already. I did a ghost clearing and then they said, well, they're back. And I said, well, I told you because you're so fascinated with this work. If you talk to them, they'll come back. It's like inviting them back. And they're like, yeah, you're right. I did. They did. <laughs> I'm like, well, what do you want? Do you want to pay? You want me to, you know, you want me to come back again and you pay me and then we go through this again? Or do you just want to say, sorry, I want my space. So anyway. <sighs> asking if there's anything else. I hope not. You know, after I record, I always go, oh my God, there's more. I should have said this, that, and the other thing. But this is where I'm going to stop. I hope you never have to deal with trickster energy. And if you're dealing with it, I hope you 
or find a way out of it. Whether of your own accord in holy water throughout everywhere or smudging throughout everywhere, prayers throughout the whole room, chanting, singing, toning, or bringing in another person that knows how to deal with it and work with it to release it and get it cleansed and cleared. I love you. My heart goes out to you. Thank you so much for tuning in. Legally speaking, this podcast is presented solely for educational, spiritual, and entertainment purposes. It is not intended as a substitute for medical diagnosis, treatment, or the advice of a physician, psychotherapist, or other qualified professional. You should not use this information to diagnose or treat a health problem or condition. Always check with your doctor. Thank you. Thank you for joining us today. If you've enjoyed this episode with Constance Mesmer, we'd like to encourage you to continue your spiritual journey with this next episode.